Well, hello everyone. This is a uh, longer term project I've been working on uh, piecewise as I can. And uh, I'm sure most of you that watch my videos watch it for the casting content. So I'm building a uh, another CNC router for myself, mostly because I wanted a bigger cutting envelope. Uh, this one will have about three foot by three foot by one foot uh, cutting envelope in it and be much more rigid uh, than my uh, existing CNC router. So if I want to cut soft metals, it'll be uh, in better position to do that. But um, it's, uh, it's a fair, fairly big project. Um, I thought I'd start off with showing you some of the casting content because I know uh, most of you that watch are interested in lost foam casting. So the uh, first few things I made for it um, were the Z-axis, uh, the, uh, the dust shoe um, for it, and uh, the traveling gantry. Um, for it. Um, and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll probably end up having to break it up into a uh, four or five part series. Otherwise, the length of the videos will get ridiculously long um, on that. But uh, I'll take you through, um, I'm thinking right now, uh, probably uh, add the z-axis uh, onto uh, this video. And then I'll make a separate one here for the gantry uh, uh, beam. And uh, I'll try to put some links to uh, a build thread that I have uh, started at thehomefoundry.org on that. And if you're interested in more details about the build um, or um, the castings that go into each of these um, parts, you can have a look there. And I'll try to stuff a few still photos in after this so you can kind of see the direction um, that I'm heading on that. But uh, this one will probably be a, a series that... Uh, yeah, it'll, I'm sure it'll drag well into this winter um, before I complete it. It's a pretty big project. I got a lot of other projects on the go too. So stay tuned to that. I'll try to entitle them all so they're easy to identify um, in the series. And if you uh, pay attention to my channel, you shouldn't have any problem following along. But stay tuned here and off we go with uh, the Z-axis. Hey everyone, well, this is where it all starts for that uh, casting for the Z carriage, at least the traveling part of it. You can see it spent some time on the CNC router here. It's still in the uh, machining frame. Um, tell you what, um, I actually had to make the uh, lost foam pattern in two pieces for two reasons. One, um, I can't get foam stock uh, very easily that's thicker than two inches. And the, the, the Z casting is about three inches thick. So I've tried all kinds of things as far as gluing, but not very many glues that are decent lost foam glues um, machine very well. They load up the cutters. And I've just found that it's just way easier just to um, make the pattern in two parts and glue it together. And also part of the reason that um, I was doing increasing the Z travel is I really can't machine um, much more than two inches depth because by the time I get the length of the bit in there and with height under gantry, um, two inches is about it on the machine the way it currently is. So that's a um, significant part of my motivation for uh, modifying it. But uh, anyway, I'll tell you what, uh, these are the two pieces that get glued together. I'll, uh, I'll cut them out of the frames and then we'll take a closer look at it um, when the pattern is assembled back shortly. Hello everyone, back with you. I've got the uh, pattern assembled and detailed up pretty much as the uh, casting is going to look. Thought I'd discuss that with you. So last time you saw it, um, I had it in two pieces and they were still in the uh, machining frames. I cut them out of the machining frames and assembled them. And as I mentioned in the previous video, it's two pieces and you can see the seam right here. So the lower one inch um, of this pattern was the second piece and you can see from the inside you know there that uh, it's pretty seamless uh, putting it together uh, like that you can other than that visual seam you really can you can't tell you know that it was done in two pieces and it's just uh, so much easier that way and then some of the other details I've added um, I added some a little additional stock um, here. You can see there's undercuts in there. And I've also added um, these, uh, these uh, mounting bosses. So I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, they just weren't worth uh, trying to um, do multiple setups on the CNC because the undercuts prevented me from uh, three axis machining it. So I just took a, 
a razor knife and cut off the tops of the uh, of the webs and just glued these little pieces on. That's one of the beauties of lost foam. And similarly, here on top where the uh, ball screw nut mounts, um, I added these features on the end because again, um, I couldn't get at that side with uh, the Z axis on that. So again, really easy just to uh, you know cut out separate pieces and, and add them uh, with lost foam. So uh, one other thing that I, you know, it's gonna be really important on this part is keeping it uh, flat and straight. So, um, you know, uh, when I, I want this to be as rigid as possible. And strictly speaking, if I wanted it to be as rigid as possible uh, torsionally, you know, like, like this, twisting it, I would have made these webs um, diagonal. But um, I have a, a plate uh, to screw on the top that has diagonal braces in it. And I've got some other features um, that I'm putting on that plate, some of the details. So I didn't want to complicate the casting with that. It was uh, much easier to uh, draw and it'll cast much better this way, or at least it'll pack in the sand much better this way. But the one thing you can do with the pattern is, is you can kind of do an intuitive stress analysis. I mean, you can grab it and twist it and torque it and see how it deflects. And you'll notice right away that it's a heck of a lot stiffer up here where the webs are than down here where the relief for the router is. And that's because, you know, if you look at the end, it's kind of like, you know, well, of course it, it, it will. Like if I flex this like this, uh, you can see the obvious point is, is right here. But, um, the screw rides well up in the tunnel here, and at least for the six inches, I'm going to fill this in with a little web, um, and that'll stiffen it up um, quite a bit as far as the casting and the pattern. In actual use, um, when it's actually in the machine, it'll have the router clamp here, and that'll make this end of it really, really stiff when the router clamp with the router in it is, is clamped in there. But I'll probably add a brace here, in here, um, a couple of places, just to keep the pattern um, stiff um, when I'm dip coating it and casting it, and then I'll remove them um, after in machining. And this brace that's down here, that'll probably stay um, as part of the casting because the screw is well up into the tunnel and the end support for the screw doesn't run the whole length um, of the casting when it's in use. So. Uh, that should stiffen it up uh, quite a bit. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you just a quick shot of uh, how I sprue it up and what I come up with here um, for, for dip coating it and casting it before I actually cast it. But uh, it's a pretty crazy looking casting um, as far as a lot of features. And uh, it was an hour and 20 minutes to machine um, on the CNC. Uh, an hour and 10 of it was with a single um, bit, a quarter inch ball nose, and I just walked away from it and went and did something productive while it machined it. But it's, um, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite the cast. I'm actually pretty jazzed about it. It's one of my favorite castings. Um, Going to be one of my favorite castings right up there with some of my intake manifolds. But uh, anyway, I'll uh, be back with you in a bit to take a look at uh, how I sprued it up. All right, everybody back with you, and I've got this puppy... Uh, sprued and gated up and ready to dip coat and after that pour so uh where i pick up where i left off there i did add this little tunnel stiffening piece and wow that made a huge difference in the stiffness of the pattern and then the uh the gates here as you can see run all the way down each side and the contact area is reduced with that little cove right there as you can see and that um, skinny end is what actually touches it you can't see the cove that's on the inside, and then these little things are just uh, bracing bars to give it uh, added stiffness. And then these um, are drying legs, so when I get this thing dip coated, I'll just sit it on those drying legs and let it dry like that because, as I've mentioned a bunch of times before, these things get super heavy when they get full of refractory. So um, the sprue, you can see, I actually uh, attached right here, and. I really didn't do that to feed it. That's really more so for strength. Um, so I can hang it uh, by that screw up here. And the same thing down here, I, I glued on a little chunk of masonite down here, um, as you can see, and I put a couple screws in it because my plan is, is I'm gonna hang this thing after I dip it above my vat at an angle 
and I'm going to support it down here and and at the top and let all the slurry drip out of all the webs for you know an hour or so and then wrestle it onto a flat board uh, and a flat surface and let it dry the rest of the way. So uh, I was going to add um, a little brace um, across the top like this but this stiffened up so much um, when I tied that bottom end together I just don't think it's needed and plus you know a quarter inch it really wasn't going to do that much so I think I'm happy with it the way it is. I've got a tapered sprue <laughs> ready for it. So uh, yeah, next time maybe we'll be talking about a casting. Stay tuned. Well, hi everyone, I'm back with you. And as you probably gathered uh, from the photos, uh, I sneaked in a few more castings for the project on you, but um, First, let's take a look at that uh, Z-axis casting. And uh, I did some fairly light machining on it. Uh, drilled and tapped a pile of holes. I mean, I think there's 40 drilled and tapped holes in it. But uh, just to take a little bit closer look at it, you can see on the back side here, um, I machined a little registration slot in each side here for the linear rail to register against. So they're nice and uh, accurately positioned and, and parallel and and accurately spaced on that and all of those holes um, with the bosses there had to be drilled and tapped on 60 millimeter centers to receive those 20 millimeter rails. Um, the uh, the Z-nut, that was kind of tricky. Um, had to extend the head on a buddy's bridge port uh, hanging on the side of the uh, of the XY uh, table and uh, extend the head out to do that but uh, Got the job done well on that. And then um, on the top, to mount the, uh, the router, I actually uh, milled a little registration slot here in each side, and there's a mating feature in the router clamp that uh, makes it register positively and accurately um, in the Z-axis. And then, of course, mounting bolts for it. I've got a couple positions I can mount it. And then uh, all of these holes up here, I've got a stiffening brace and some other brackets that hold cable chain and stuff like that, all the details in that. But uh, yeah, it's machined and uh, I think it's a nice part. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we can take a look at the uh, router clamp. You can see here, um, it's just uh, got the three and a half inch bore to receive three and a half inch bore routers. Um, I counterboard this side and, and slit it um, so you can see here um, that slit saw that I used. So you just pinch it and that's what grabs the, uh, the router. You can position the router at any height in it that you want. But then you can see here, here are the little registration slots that uh, mount up um, in the uh, Z-axis casting. So if I uh, put that in there, you can see it just sits in there like so and I'll do some assembly. Um, on it. Maybe I'll put it together with those parts in the background. We'll look at that next, but you get the idea there. That register is nice and positively uh, in there. So that's uh, the router clamp. Um, and then this other part here is the stationary dust shoe. And uh, so the idea with this is, is that uh, you would, it would mount on the stationary part of the Z plate with a couple of uh, three quarter inch tubes that go up and then there'd be a similar clamp feature that mounted on the stationary Z plate. You can see that tooling plate in the background there. That's what I'm gonna make the Z plate out of. So it would clamp down here at stock working height and then the router telescopes uh, up and down. And the big deal on this is, is I mostly machine uh, plank and board stock of uh, uniform height. So when I do 3D machining, I'd probably like the shoe uh, to move uh, with the router. So I may make a separate shoe, a traveling shoe, I guess I could call it for that. But this should actually be a lot more effective and it also allows the router to be retracted out of the shoe to do um, bit changes. So that's pretty nice. I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I'm gonna put a little insert um, in here that goes in the top to control the uh, airflow um, into the shoe. And this is the duct, um, it's rear exit. It exits out um, on the backside of the z-axis so it's not in the way and this is the uh, the uh, elbow duct adapter duct 
um, for the vacuum that I made that mates up to it. So you get the idea there. I'll probably put them together and we'll have a closer look at them. But uh, yeah, that's a, uh, it's pretty light casting, but you know, since it's stationary and it's not part of the moving mass of the Z, um, it's not that weight critical, but yeah, I don't want any more in there than there has to be, but it's a, it's a good stout part. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I think it should be a good dust shoe um, on that. So anyway, how about if I uh, just test fit some of the mating parts that go um, into it and we have another quick look before we move on to bigger and better things. Stay tuned. Well, I'll just take a look at the pieces uh, assembled, uh, get a little bit better idea here. Of course, the dust shoe. Um, I've got these little positionable handles here. I got some pretty stout uh, three quarter inch tubing that uh, will, there'll be a companion clamp that mounts up on the stationary uh, part of the Y axis. Um, you loosen those up there and you can adjust the height um, of the shoe. But since it's mounted to the stationary axis, it travels um, independent uh, at a fixed height of, of the Z axis on that. And uh, the uh, dust chute here exits up behind the Z axis. So you've got uh, plenty of room to retract the, uh, the router spindle um, out of the shoe. And then it's sitting there staring at you in wide open space. Um, so you can change tools on that. And then um, to control the, uh, the airflow and, and the chips, um, I've got these little recessed pockets in here and uh, I got these little super magnets and uh, the idea is is that uh, I'll drop those super magnets in there and then have uh, uh, glue them in and then this is a um, um, plate that I use in my pin router I made for those to adjust the throat opening on them but you get the idea I put magnets in the back side of those and then I can drop in um, that plate and that way the makeup air for the vacuum doesn't all have to come from the shoe um, skirt because if you get real high vacuum down there you can suck your stock right off the table because um, if I'm machining foam I only tape it to the table but uh, this should give it plenty of makeup air and I'm thinking that I'm just going to use uh, down here on this projection maybe a little rubber half a half inch uh, skirt projection here and I'll either two-sided tape or zip tie or clamp it on and just cut vertical slits in it so it's plenty flexible. But the shoe then will be positioned basically at the height or just just above um, the board or uh, plank stock that you're machining. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much the dust shoe on that, except the mounting clamps. That Well, actually, you see in the background there that, that tooling plate is what I'm going to make the stationary Z plate out of that the linear bearings actually uh, mount on. So maybe to move on from that a little bit. So here's the uh, traveling portion of the Z axis assembled. You can see I've got the thrust block sat on there and uh, see if I can pull it out a little bit. Yeah, you can see the uh, Z nut is mounted in the end of the axis. And if I push that in there and flip it over, you see, I've got the linear rails mounted on the back side uh, there. I only got a couple screws in them on that. And then uh, if we look at the other end, you can see the router clamp is clamped on there and the little registration uh, steps um, located perfectly um, in the Z axis on that. And uh, you can see the mounting holes there, how uh, the screws mount the clamp to the Z and then there's a couple of screws right right here in front for actually clamping the router and then as far as the router this particular uh, clamp and mount here should mount any uh, three and a half inch diameter uh, router body um, I've gotten a few of these Porter Cable 690s I'm trying to decide what to do um, with these little pegs you see here these are actually for in the base they've got a double lead slot in the inside of the base and when you twist it, it adjusts the height with them. Um, I don't need height adjustment in this, but I either have to uh, broach some vertical slots um, in the clamp or remove the pegs um, on the router. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet um, on that, but um, it does just, uh, it'll slide in there right up to those, uh, those pegs. So you get an idea of that right there, what it looks like. 
And uh, yeah, it should be a good stout um, assembly uh, to hold the clamp and, and hold the router and, and travel. So uh, we'll see how it does on that. So far, I'm pretty happy with it, but uh, the proof will be in the pudding, as they say. Stay tuned. All right, I'm testing out my new Z-axis here. Um, I clamped it to the table so it was in the uh, vertical position and uh, I could test it against the uh, weight of the uh, traveling part of the Z itself. And, and all I did was I, I homed my machine um, and I just switched the cables um, after I homed it and so I could jog it around. And uh, I changed the resolution um, to the new ball screw lead, which is 10 millimeters. The old one was eight. Um, I increased uh, the Z max travel distance because that's kind of the whole point of this is I got a lot more travel um, on that. I left the acceleration setting um, where it was, which was uh, 700 millimeters per second square. And I, the max Z speed has been set at uh, 4,570 millimeters per minute. And I've been running it at that for the last year and a half, and it's fast enough for me. I mean, I cut foam. I mean, it's the, the rapids are a lot faster than that on the X and Y axis. They're like uh, 16,000 uh, millimeters per minute for the rapids on the X and Y. But on the Z, um, it's been set at 4570 for the past year and a half. So I just arbitrarily doubled that to 9,000. And I've been jogging it around. I put this dial um, on there, one that I'm not too fond of in case I crashed it. But I haven't done that, and uh, I can't make it skip a step. I mean, I'm actuating it, and I even hold it with some resistance. Um, I don't know, it must be at least 30 pounds of resistance that I'm holding it with, and it doesn't even give a hint that it's going to skip a step. But uh, you can see here, this is, uh, so this is 9,000 millimeters per minute, and just actuating an inch, and it comes right back, and it repeats, you know, to as close as that dial can measure, which is an inch or a thousandth of an inch and it repeats that every time and if I just give her a long jog here down to nine, nine inches down nine inches back up yeah it, it stops right dead solid you know right to the nearest thousandth of an inch that that dial uh, can measure so uh, this is just the uh, standard NEMA uh, 23 stepper um, that came with that millwright system I'm sure it's nothing special but uh I think the Z-axis um, would probably be just fine um, the way it's set up. And for me, the real challenge will probably be if I build a new system um, with more mass in the moving gantry, um, actuating that. Because um, uh, the rapids uh, on this Mega V machine for the X and Y um, are 650 inches per minute, which is, you know, obviously flying. But uh, we'll see. I don't necessarily know that it needs to be that fast, but... Uh, I'd be completely satisfied, I think, with the Z the way it is. So, yep. I'll uh, put a little bit, I'm going to, I'll weigh the, uh, the, the whole thing and put a little bit more information in the post for everyone to chew on. But uh, thanks for everybody's comments and help so far, and I'll soldier on.